Hello, everyone. Good to see all of you again after a long gap. We are back with yet another episode on anthropology. And specifically speaking, we will discuss biological anthropology in some detail. But keep in mind, uh, our anthropology optional is not just about biology per se, but it is about biological anthropology, where we emphasize more on the applications of these biological aspects to humans, to humanity, right? That's what anthropology is. It's a discipline of infinite curiosity about humans. So that's an important sort of a distinction to keep in mind. So a biology answer isn't necessarily a biological anthropology answer. And one more thing, uh, most of the students probably think that biology portion is going to be taxing, it's going to be slightly challenging, but trust me, that is not the case at all. Biology is in fact quite easy. And in fact, a lot of fun as well. And you yourself will realize this thing after watching these videos on the playlist. Uh, so in this playlist, we will start from the very basics uh, and try to sort of help you build some interest and more importantly, help you build a strong foundation when it comes to biological anthropology. So without any further delay, let's get started. The, the thing is, the female system is going to be very, very different in that it is trying to produce only one egg. Okay. And that is sufficient here. The male system has gone for a completely different sort of an approach in which it decides to produce millions of them. Okay. And that itself is like, you know, so, so, so. So odd, so, um, you know, um, right, when you, when you come to see that. And there are reasons why. So this fertilization is about this sort of amazing story, right? So there is a single sperm that has to sort of ejaculate into this particular uh, cavity and hope that, you know, one of the sperm cells, okay, amongst 270 million, 300 million, whatever it is, depending upon the health and the age and all of the, the different the individual person, okay, to enter and fertilize this, okay? So to unite with an egg, Okay, to form that human life since or post fertilization. So during sexual intercourse, right, there are about uh, approximately, let's just say, there are around 300 uh, million sperm and this will enter the vagina. And soon after it enters the vagina, and if I miss, I should have made this a bigger diagram. Okay, I'm sure. okay there you go. So let's say it enters. Okay, how many? millions and the next thing you know okay within like a few minutes you will have a lot of them sort of get discharged from the the vaginal cavity immediately so here itself from your 300 million a good number of them have died okay now let us say a uh, some of them have not and they have managed to enter this and this is how your sperm sort of looks Okay, so this is your, so the genetic material is present here, your nucleus and all of that. Okay, and this is basically your mitochondria. Okay, meaning this is the energy sort of, like how do you propel yourself here? And this is basically the, the tail that helps you sort of swim up, right, into the female. So you've already seen that after this, okay, many of them flow out of the vagina, the sperm comes out of the vagina and it is done. Okay, some of them that enter here again, you know, they will be this, the, the, the inside the vagina, it is an acidic environment, not a very hospitable place. Okay, uh, many of them will die there itself. But however, there will be many that survive because of the protective elements that are present in the fluid that we just talked about, right? And that is from your seminal vesicle, your uh, prostate gland, right? That, that, that basically the semen. Now the sperm must actually pass through what we call as the cervix. Okay. Okay, and then opening into your uterus. If you see here, the cervix and then your uterus. Where is the uterus? There you go. Okay, I'll just highlight these two. And what happens once you enter here? Generally, this remains tightly closed. But here at this particular point, the cervix is open for a few days while the woman is ovulating. Okay, 24 hour window, 12 hour, 12 to 24, 12 to 48, whatever it is, you know, depending upon person to person depending upon book to book. So the sperm is going to swim through the cervical mucus of, you know, whatever the, 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 uh, the liquidy sort of components here. Okay. So, and this will not be like very thick, uh, you know, kind of a liquid. It will actually be at this particular point, a lot more watery. Okay. Because it has to enable uh, sort of easier passage of the sperm up. Now, once it is inside the cervix, the sperm continues swimming more and more. Okay. Towards the uterus, Okay, while many of them keep dying, okay, while making it through this sort of mucus. Now, some of the sperm may get caught behind, okay, some, some might be like, you know, they're lost somewhere in, uh, you know, other places within the cervix, okay, but some 
um, you know, even within the uterus, you have some muscular sort of uh, intrauterine uh, or uterine sort of contractions that will, it is almost like sucking up the sperm, okay, upwards, okay, it is also helping, right? And so it is sort of assisting the sperm on their journey towards the egg, okay? And the egg, let us say, it is on this particular side of the fallopian tube. Can I draw it here? Can you guys see this? I should have used a different color pen, but it's okay, okay? We are running a little short on time. Okay, but however, again, you know, you have resident cells within the uh, woman's immune system, you know, uh, mistaking the sperm for foreign invaders. Sometimes, yes, okay, there might be. So there are some anti-sperm antibodies, okay? We're not going to go into that detail. Primarily, it is there amongst the males itself. And this could be due to a variety of reasons. It could be that, you know, there has been some sort of an injury there. There has been some sort of a cancer. There's been some, you know, those kinds of things, okay? Anti-sperm sort of this one. Sometimes even in females, not to a large extent, but to some extent, okay? Again, there are some tests that you can you can do to find out you know, uh, how exactly does it deal with sperm? There, is, there are some tests. But anyways, leaving that aside, um, a lot of these sperm, okay, let's say half of them are going to go into this particular fallopian tube. Okay, half of them are going to go into this particular fallopian tube. And remember, uh, um, you know, many of these, there are very few already, right? Because a lot of them starting from the point of ejaculation from this particular point entering here, you see that, you know, a lot of millions of them are dying at one stage or another. Okay, so half the sperm are heading for the empty fallopian tube on the right hand side, half of them are sort of swimming up towards the tube containing the unfertilized egg on the left hand side. And by now, not even millions, probably like a few thousand, okay, will remain. And inside this fallopian tube, there are, so if, if I draw this fallopian tube like this, Okay, you have your film here. Okay, and here you have these bristles kind of a thing. And it's like, a, you know, like seaweed kind of, I mean, not like seaweed, but something like this. And these are like moving left and right. So this actually helps, okay, uh, in sort of motion. Okay, and these are called tiny cilia. Okay, so basically, again, so con to continue, uh, the sperm, uh, you know, it has to fight all of these things against this sort of motion. The cilia is supposed to help bring this egg all the way to the uterus, this lining. However, you know, the sperm has to fight all of these things and then enter here. Okay. Are you guys following? No questions so far, right? I mean, it's not going too fast. And by this point, you will notice that the sperm becomes a little more, you know, by now, you know, it is the fittest of the sperms that the last remaining ones, right? So it becomes a little more, it has, you know, this protective uh, protection as well. But at the same time, the sperm is sort of becoming a little more hyperactive. It is swimming harder. It is swimming faster. It is stronger, whatever it is, towards their destination. Okay. As long as this, the sperm uh, reaches the egg. Okay. Uh, you know, it'll be like a few dozen starting from the original 270 million, 300 million, somewhere there. Now, by now, you know, the egg uh, generally is covered. So the outer layering of the egg, it is, uh, is called, you know, it is made up of a layer of cells. It's called Corona radiata. Okay. And uh, right under that thing, there is another layer. It is called the Zona pellucida. Okay. When the sperm is going to reach the Zona pellucida, okay, they will sort of attach to the sperm uh, uh, receptors. So in your egg. Okay. In fact, if you look at it, the sperm will only be this size. And the egg will be massive. Okay, so the outer layer of these these sort of things are not required. But I have to go through my corona radiata to reach my zona pellucida. Okay, and here you have these sperm receptors. Meaning, if I reach here, this egg will sort of find a way to suck me in. Okay to sort of uh, uh, enable the sperm to sort of burrow into this layer and sort of fertilize. Okay, and here again, you know, there is, uh, there are some other things that I'm sort of swallowing up here. Okay, the details are not that important. But what has happened is that these sperm receptors have helped sort of the sperm to reach the egg and sort of fertilize. So this is the journey. Okay, that's why they say, you know, it's an incredible odds, 300, 270 million of these things, finally to allow for a single sperm to attach to the egg, to the egg cells membrane. And soon, you know, within a few minutes, right, it's within a few minutes, the outer membranes will actually start fusing and the egg pulls the sperm inside and it'll form something like this. This is the fertilized 
version fertilized egg okay now for instance now i said what if there are more other sperms that come in who have not reached first but still want you know to uh, to fertilize by now the egg right the outer membranes here um the egg once it sort of starts fertilizing with this it starts releasing uh, uh you know um some chemicals that push the other sperm away from the egg and not sort of allow it to you know enter the egg okay it becomes an impenetrable sort of fertilization membrane okay you cannot enter this so now you know that is why one sperm one egg and now once the stage takes place okay this stage takes place this is where we are going to talk about the fact that now the sperm right it is going to now the sperm is safe it has reached it has reached its destination so from this particular point where it had sort of its genetic material right now this genetic material is sort of going to start unfolding so now it is going to become this let's say it has brought y and the egg okay this also is going to start you know you know bringing out its genetic material okay this is called the pronucleus for the female pronucleus for the male and coming together you have you know two sets of chromosomes joining together and at this point okay if we come a little outside of our you know uh, these technicalities okay and go back to our genetics what is happening our fertilization process is sort of complete right and you know the genetic code for this particular child or for this particular offspring is already set because these are the components that have come in after meiosis okay this particular gamete this particular gamete coming together two sets of chromosomes have been put together and instantly immediately i know the gender i know the hair color i know the eye color and hundreds of other characteristics of this particular offspring i know as in like it has already been decided right it has already been decided because it has already come together and we have gotten the the basic zygote okay this new single cell the zygote this is the beginning of this new offspring of the new human being now this cilia that we just talked about right in this fallopian tube is where it has fertilized now this thing will again you know sort of push this fertilized egg to the these endometrium layers where it can embed okay it's where it has got you know blood and nutrients and what not okay rich uterine sort of lining and it is going to grow and mature and the next 9 months until it is ready for birth is that sort of clear okay great if possible uh, just i mean it is not directly from the syllabus but sex and fertilization 10 marks sex and fertilization 10 marks if you can write this um you know the way you understand it the way you can okay uh, once if you write this you will never ever have to look at this topic again okay it will become very very simple so you are introducing you know the, the male reproductive system the male sort of change in adolescence the puberty aspect the female sort of things the same you know corresponding thing in the female and then we are bringing in you know how exactly so again we go back to our biological anthro and genetics and then we try to bring in before we can say that this sort of a 23 uh, 22 plus 1 and this 22 plus 1 are going to come together and the fact that this was generated through a process of meiosis and this was generated through a process of meiosis and the fact that we are talking about the menstrual cycle and pregnancy you can put all of these together and if you can write uh, one uh, like you know an answer whether it is like two page answer three page answer of your choice okay you will never ever have to go through this topic again i mean you may want to go through the topic but you know you will never have trouble with this topic again if you have any questions uh, you know you will know in case there are some parts that you know are sort of uh, troubling you or you know sort of uh, 
if there are stumbling blocks you bring it to my attention okay and then we will discuss it in uh, you know how much of a detail that you want okay no worries about this any questions illandre nale nale nodutini okay chalo then okay and sorry to harika because i forgot to send you the link okay okay good night i'll wait for 30 seconds in case anybody has any questions otherwise you know you guys are all free to log out Okay guys take care good night bye bye Hope you guys are finding a biological anthropology playlist useful for your preparation I uh, hope this video helped reinforce your basics and also helped you connect a little better with the applications If there's any other aspect of anthropology that you would like to know more about uh, do let us know in the comment section and we will try to make videos on those as well Thank you for watching and we will see you in the next video